I think mountain zebras got something of everything. So I think in terms of landscapes, that really hits you when you come here for the first time. People love the, um, the tranquility of the park and the, um, the arid landscape's got a bit of magic to it. Mountain zebras actually are the conversion zone of three very prominent biomes that are sort of poorly conserved elsewhere. Um, it's the Nama Karu biome, and then there's also the Eastern Thicket biome and then there's sort of a, a transitional savanna, more shrubland biome as it does occur in the park. And then there's some unique animals. Obviously the Cape Mountain zebra was um, preserved, conserved here, one of the last populations. The mountain zebra was actually proclaimed in 1937 and at that particular time its sole purpose was to conserve a very small or referred to as a remnant population of Cape Mountain Zebra. Um, our census this year revealed there's over, just over a thousand of them. So it's one of the more positive stories with regard to conservation success. But since then um, the objectives of sand parks have changed. A number of other animals have been re reintroduced into the area subsequently. So they are trying to and they have very successfully reintroduced a number of animals. Um, initially started with the herbivores and then from the herbivores have come the predators and so now it's more of a representative of conservation of the overall biodiversity as opposed to a particular species and it's done very well in light of that. We've got uh, 20 family cottages here at the rest camp. We've got uh, a swimming pool as well for the 20 family cottages. We've got the guest house, door and door guest house. We also have two mountain cottages as well. The family cottages that we offer here is a two bedroom unit. And then the mountain cottages that we offer is a bit further away from the rest camp. It can sleep the maximum of 10 people, but mostly six people normally use the mountain cottages. The guest house is also available for a family people of six. It's, a, it's our monument. It was uh, rebuilt and then uh, completed last year in October. I'll have to start off with just what makes national parks unique if you compare them to any game reserves or whatever is that you can drive around in your own vehicle. So you can really do it on a budget if you need to. And you know, all of our roads are accessible with normal vehicles. Um, then we've got uh, guided walks which we do in the mornings, uh, we've got guided game drives, we do early morning drives and we do sunset drives where you get snacks and drinks and watch the sun go down and we do night drives. Then we have the cheetah tracking, basically you go out with, with a guide and you track a cheetah which has got, some of our cheetahs have got tracking collars on. Um, and the idea is to let you experience a cheetah, a wild cheetah in its natural habitat so it's nothing at all like you know, walking with a tame cheetah or dealing with, with some animal that's been brought up, you know, in a, um, not in a wild environment. Um, and then we've got the uh, hike up to Salpeterkop, where at the top of the mountain you'll find a, a chessboard that was carved by the, the British soldiers during the Anglo-Boer War. Mountain Zebra National Park is renowned for its excellent service and friendliness as well. The staff here, it's, they are amazingly friendly. We've been getting feedback from clients saying that it's, uh, it's good to be at Mountain Zebra because of your friendly staff and we strive for excellence as well. Our objective is to put Mountain Zebra on the map. We want to be one of the best.